Hello everyone, this is Chris from Spoon Graphics, back with another video tutorial for Adobe Illustrator, plus a little Photoshop right at the end. Today I'm going to take you through the process of creating a retro text effect, inspired by the title art for the Superman comic books. Old comic book titles feature some really simple but effective text styles, often incorporating faux 3D effects, bright colours and thick black outlines. It's a graphic style that is immediately recognisable thanks to the common visual features that appear in different variations across all the superhero stories. The original comic book covers were drawn by hand, but I'll show you how to apply some adjustments to your text in Illustrator to transform it into a bold comic book title effect. Then stick around till the end to see how the comic book theme is enhanced with the help of my bad print effects Photoshop action. To create your superhero text effect, open Adobe Illustrator and create a new document. I'm using a generic landscape A4 layout, but with the RGB colour mode and pixel units, since we're creating a digital design. Lay out your wording with the type tool. We need a sans serif font, with plenty of nice heavy weights to choose from. I'm using one of my favourites named Proxima Nova. It has an extensive library with plenty of weight options. Activate it via the link in the description if you're an Adobe CC user. Set the whole word in the fattest weight available, which is black. Then select just the first letter and increase its size, so it acts like a capital against all the other letters. Since it has been scaled up, the strokes are much thicker than the other letters, so choose a slightly thinner font version, such as Extra Bold. Give the text a neutral grey fill using one of the preset swatches. Retro comic book titles were drawn in all kinds of warped layouts. We can replicate the look in Illustrator using the Object Envelope Distort Make menu. Choose Arch, then set values of around 15% for the bend, then minus 20 for the horizontal distortion. Next, go to Object Transform and Shear. Set the axis to vertical, then enter 5 degrees in the shear angle to position the text in an arcing upwards direction. To create the 3D effect, use Illustrator's simple 3D tools under Effect, 3D and Extrude and Bevel. Keep all the angles at their default values, but change the extrude depth to around 100 points. Then set the perspective value to 45 degrees. The grey fill we applied earlier allows us to see the shading Illustrator has generated. The default black fill would cause everything to be black. Go to Object and Expand Appearance to permanently apply these adjustments to the text. Right click on the text object and choose ungroup a couple of times until the option is no longer available. Activate the stroke option in the toolbar, then configure it with black. Set the stroke weight to two points in the stroke panel. Those little visual glitches where the paths intersect can be eliminated by applying a round corner style. Activate the fill selector in the toolbar, then give everything a black fill too. Click on the artboard to deselect everything then hold the shift key and select all the front faces of the letters. Give them a new fill colour. I'm using a red of 250, 20 and 50 in the RGB values. Click in some empty space to deselect everything again, then make a selection of all the top faces of each letter. Sometimes Illustrator will have split the face into multiple segments. Select all the shapes that apply. Give these shapes the preset cyan colour from the swatches panel. Don't forget any other faces that are hiding within the wording, such as the letter E and that H that I've just missed. To process the curved letters that have been split into several segments, select the object then choose Release Clipping Mask from the right click menu. Right click again and choose Ungroup. You first have to deselect and reselect again to be able to find the Ungroup option. Now you can select a few of these shapes and give them a black fill. Skip one to leave it blue in order to create that gradual shading effect like the original comic book title art. Go to edit and copy, then undo the ungrouping and delete those segments. Go to edit and paste in place to put just the pieces we copied back in place. You can then configure the appearance with a black fill and no stroke. Select any leftover segments and merge them into one shape using the unite button in the pathfinder panel. Repeat the process on the other faces that have multiple segments. Release the clipping mask first, then deselect and reselect in order to ungroup them. Select the shapes you want to keep and make a copy. Edit and undo, then delete the group. Paste back in the shapes and configure them with a black fill. 
In some areas, the stacking order will be completely wrong. Use the shortcut for arrange send backward, which is command and the square bracket key. Press the shortcut as many times as required to position the shapes in the correct place. Other shapes with flat faces are much simpler. They just require the split segments to be joined up again with the Pathfinder's Unite button. Follow these steps for any leftover letters with round outlines to create the shaded effect and delete or merge the other pieces. The stacking order for the last letters is too far out of alignment to keep pressing the Send Backwards shortcut. Instead use the Send to Back shortcut, then repeatedly press Bring Forward to bring it into place much faster. Select all the shapes that make up the text effect and group them together, then deselect. Set up the appearance with a yellow fill and no stroke. Use the rectangle tool to draw a background across the canvas. Send this shape to the back to position it underneath the text. That's the main retro comic book effect complete, but there's one last step in Adobe Photoshop that really enhances the comic book look and transforms this crisp digital artwork into an authentic looking retro print. Make a copy of everything, then create a new document in Adobe Photoshop. Use the imported dimensions, even though they're quite small. Go to image and image size and increase the width to around 2000 pixels, which also affects the height in proportion. Paste in the vector art and scale it to size to fill the larger canvas. Follow the link in the description to download and install my Bad Print Effects Photoshop action. This tool automatically replicates the aesthetics of the low cost printing methods that were used for old magazine, comic and matchbook prints. Ink bleed, misregistration and visible half tone dot patterns are all side effects of cheap offset printing, but those visual traits that were once defects from the printing process are now desired effects to give modern artwork the appearance of a retro print. With my free bad print effects photoshop action, you can turn your crisp digital designs into nostalgic retro prints with a click of a button. If you want to learn how to create these effects manually, check out my retro matchbook print effects photoshop tutorial, where I explain every step required to produce these textures and distortions. One effect I want to turn off in this example is the offset filter that produces the misregistration effect where the black ink plate isn't lined up correctly. Simply turn off the visibility of the offset smart filter in the layers. The final result is an authentic looking comic book text effect inspired by the original Superman title. The adjustments in Illustrator transformed the basic text with a faux 3D appearance and the necessary arcing and perspective those old comic book titles tend to have. Then the piece is really brought to life with additional retro treatments with my bad print effects action, adding half tones, ink bleed and paper texture in. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.